Hello everyone, my name is Pixelriffs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today I'm on my way out to the Ender Ender just to do a quick bit of tool mending because as you can see I have some pretty low durability shovels in my inventory that need mending because today we're going to do ourselves a lot of digging and we're going to look for something that is possibly one of the more elusive things about Minecraft. People have trouble finding biomes in Minecraft, people have trouble finding certain structures in Minecraft, and there are various things that can help you with that. You have stuff like Eyes of Ender to help you find the stronghold, you have things like maps that will lead you to ocean monuments and woodland mansions, and if you explore a desert for long enough, you'll probably encounter a desert temple or two here and there. Let me just check that I am facing north. Good, I think I am. There we go. Because <laughs> I need to head out to my ender ender and the stronghold, oh, is actually to the south. So <laughs> the compass isn't helping me at all so far, but hopefully I'll get my bearings one of these days. So uh, yeah, I want to head out to a desert in search of a fossil. Fossils, we will go into a little bit more in, in depth in later on in this episode. But first of all, I have to point out that there is really no guaranteed way of finding a fossil in Minecraft. You kind of have to just dig a whole bunch in certain areas. And so with that in mind, I need to repair my shovels and we need to do a great deal of digging. Which is why I find myself once again turning down my mob sounds <laughs> at the ender ender and uh, taking care of a few of these shovels because gosh, we've got a lot of ender pearls already and <laughs> the, this thing is, is trying to cart them up to the surface as quickly as possible but I am throwing them out by the bucket load. We need to do a lot of digging in either a desert or a swamp. And I've decided that a desert is probably where we're going to end up because there's a lot of desert, there's a large amount of desert and I have been told by a couple of people who've been using the same world seed as I have that there is a, a location in the swamp where they have found a, uh, a fossil and it's actually very, very close to the place where we're building our main base. I've been doing a little bit of digging around there, looking in caves and stuff, and it seems like the fossil hasn't generated in the same place for me because it's not there for me at all. So I figure because I need glass for my nether hub projects and I need sandstone actually for the floor because I've decided to swap out all of those stone slabs down there for sandstone slabs, I figured I would head out to a desert and gather as much sand and sandstone as I possibly could. And I'm going to be bringing a whole lot of shovels with me. And so that's three shovels repaired and the rest of my tools except for a small amount of durability on the sword I guess and in here I actually have a whole bunch of other shovels that I'm going to bring with me. We're going to bring in all our digging equipment that we can possibly bring for this particular expedition. Yes, including one that has Curse of Vanishing and Mending, I guess, for when we get desperate. But uh, yeah, we've got a, a ton of extra tools in here that we could always use if we want to. But the main reason we are going is to find a fossil. And fossils are best found in deserts and swamps and all variants of deserts and swamps. But those are the only places you're going to find them. And people have been asking me to make videos about fossils for quite a while and there's a reason I haven't done it yet and it's because it's not guaranteed to find one like you aren't actually guaranteed even if you go looking for fossils to find one particularly easily there are some things that you can do in order to search for them more effectively but there is no surface indication there's no maps even mapping tools like amidst or mine atlas don't show uh, fossils as far as I'm aware. I think maybe the most recent version of Amidst might do, but even so, I want to show you guys how to find one or how at least to search for one more effectively if you aren't able to access those tools or if you're playing on a version for which those tools don't apply. Like Amidst only really works for the Java version of Minecraft and we have tools like Chunk Base available for other versions, but even those don't seem to track where fossils can generate because for all intents and purposes, it seems to be pretty random. So this time I'm going to head east out past the Nether Fort to my desert temple portal which is going to take us to the largest stretch of desert that I visit frequently and we are going to be searching at very specific coordinates underneath the surface of the desert so we're obviously going to have to mine down through the sand and that's why I brought myself a bunch of shovels and some shulker boxes that I can collect the sand and sandstone in but we need to dig down to around Y40 to 49 typically like just above the height where you would expect slimes to start spawning in caves and things like that those are the depths at which you will find fossils generating so we probably want to find a relatively low point in this desert or maybe even the start of a cave system the majority of the time when you find fossils it's not intentional it's by accident and you'll find them by by accident when you're out caving in a desert or a swamp. You'll just kind of stumble upon them. 
in this case, let's do a quick fly around to see if there are any cave entrances. I mean, maybe some stuff like this would be a good starting point. But there are relatively few fossils generating in the world. Typically, there will be only a, I think, a 1 in 64 chance for a chunk to generate a fossil. I believe that's the statistic that, that counts. <laughs> that's the uh, the maths behind it. Let's take down that sand block. How about that? <laughs> that's our first sand block that we're going to gather on this expedition and absolutely not the last. But yeah, we want to be digging down to around Y48 because, yeah, every chunk has a 1 in 64 chance to spawn a fossil. And if your desert has less than 64 chunks, then chances are none of them will have generated one. And I have absolutely no idea at this point if I'm even going to find a fossil in this expedition. But it looks like we are starting to get towards the right set of coordinates. I'm going to light up this cave just to make sure that nothing terrible spawns and just to make sure that we can't easily find a fossil by exploring. Looks like we are not going to. All right. Well, I'm going to do a lot of digging in this episode, but I'm going to do the majority of that off camera or on a live stream so that I can gather a bunch of materials and do a bit of caving. Effectively, what we want to do, if we can't find one just by casually exploring like this, is get down to around this level between kind of Y49 and Y40. And we want to effectively strip mine at those coordinates. So it might be worth bringing a beacon over here in the fullness of time as well so that we can just dig out a large area in a straight line and mine out a bunch of stone as well as all of the sand and sandstone on the surface. But once we find a fossil, if we find a fossil, I'm going to try and excavate it as though it's kind of like an archaeological dig. And we're actually going to plan a feature of this desert around the area where we found a fossil. I want to treat it like an actual, like, paleontological expedition, which is going to be really cool. And is that a mine shaft I see down here in the distance? It is. Oh, how lovely. Well, <laughs> I don't exactly want to come here and explore an abandoned mine shaft, especially if it's not at the right level, but chances are if there are sections of this mine shaft which, you know, go along at the coordinates that we want to be searching for between Y40 and around Y50, I suppose, then that's that's going to be ideal for looking for fossils because they will have dug through large sections of the rock and possibly even replaced sections of the fossil, but we'll be able to dig out what we can. But on second thoughts, I don't really want to deal with cave spiders right now, so I'm going to leave that feature behind. I'm going to stick around here, probably bring a beacon over and do a whole bunch of strip mining. Uh, we'll probably dig out in various directions from here, see if we can find ourselves a fossil, and hopefully when I bring you guys back in, we will be able to explore what exactly a fossil looks like. Well, folks, we did it. I had absolutely no confidence that we were actually going to be able to pull this off, but we actually did it. And below my feet, in the ground down here, is a fossil. I've actually found one, and we are going to do a little bit of work over this episode and the next episode, I think, turning this into a kind of cool archaeological dig site. I like the location of this, actually. It's right by a kind of intake from the ocean over here, so we've got access to water, which would kind of be ideal for an archaeological expedition out here. We've got a few interesting caves to look up. This one kind of looks like a nose of some kind, and uh, there's a lot of really interesting terrain to be explored around here. We've got tons of desert and open space. We've got savanna biomes around here. Let me take you on a very quick tour of what I was doing before... I discovered the fossil because out here close to the desert temple where I have my nether portal over here I actually set up a beacon and my idea at first was to kind of do a large-scale strip mining operation in order to try and find a fossil that had been buried somewhere underground because that is typically where you find them they are smushed in with the stone and even if you flew around in spectator mode at some point it would be very very difficult to actually find one. I'm going to very quickly go to the desert temple and uh, take a quick nap because otherwise the monsters in this area are going to get a little bit overwhelming. And after a very quick trip to build height to despawn any husks in the local area, there we go. We can sweep down here and obviously, as you can see, I've got a beacon set up over here giving me haste too so that I could do a bunch of strip mining. And when I mean strip mining, I mean branching out in tunnels that are... Whoa, hello! <laughs> now that the, the mobs are all gone from the surface, Oh, okay, there's some weird stuff happening with the creepers and skeletons. Also, I turned my hostile creature sounds down because I was back at the Enderman farm again. So, uh, yeah, I, I decided to dig out three by three tunnels down here, spaced out maybe nine blocks or so in each direction, simply because the fossils themselves are quite large, and I figured we would probably run into them 
eventually if we carried on tunneling out like this. And I imagine that if I had the time and effort to put into this as a large scale operation, then we would. But after a while of digging out all of this underneath the desert, I thought I was going to get a little bit bored of that. And so instead, I decided to just go caving. I was looking for surface caves that I could get to little ravines and patches like that that I could go a little bit further down and try and get to roughly the height I expected fossils to spawn. And that way I could cover a larger area without having to gather so many resources digging it up. Because to be honest, storage space for some of this stuff is a bit of an issue at this point. And also so I could spend a little bit less time digging and a little bit more time just covering more ground. So I ended up venturing down into this cave over here. Right now in the world we are at negative 3,000. 2100 or thereabouts if you guys want to explore this if you're using the same seed but then again bear in mind that i have no guarantees that the fossils are going to generate here remember that i have regenerated some of the chunks in my world and that might have messed with a little bit of the terrain generation but eventually i explored around here and i came across an abandoned mine shaft which presented an interesting opportunity because we are around y46 here and that's roughly halfway between the two coordinates where we could expect fossils to start generating but then it was always going to be a little bit of potluck whether or not we actually encountered anything and i decided to make my way through this mine shaft just lighting up things like cave spider spawners and exploring minecart chests and stuff like that then i came down this little section here found myself in a giant ravine filled with lava and creepers and all kinds of nasty stuff but then over there, <laughs> if I can actually hold the camera steady for a second, that right there is a fossil. And as you can see, right now it is hanging above a precarious ravine filled with lava. So I didn't exactly want to go and explore the fossil immediately, and digging to it from the surface was going to be a little bit of a hazard. So I figured what we could end up doing is coming down here and just pouring water over all of this lava so that it could um, turn into obsidian and make sure that we had a safe floor down there or alternatively we could try and section off areas of the ravine as though this archaeological dig maybe even started by this mine shaft here has actually filled out the rest of the ravine and allow us to work from a safe platform while we take a closer look at the fossil and i've kind of created a little bit of a dirt scaffold around the side here so we can get a slightly closer look at the thing as you can see, there are bones, there is coal, there's even a skeleton walking around inside there. A fossil inside a fossil. And the geometry of this cave was sort of a bit disorienting, but eventually I dug my way over here and found myself standing over the fossil and over that giant ravine of lava. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig down from the surface still, but we're going to take this very, very carefully because I know that there is a giant lava ravine here now that I don't want to fall into. So I'm going to excavate this very, very carefully at this level, build out a couple of bridges and a kind of like framework underneath the fossil itself to stop us from falling in lava and make the area a little bit safer. And then we're going to dig this entire thing out, probably dig down from the surface and open it up to the sky above, and then we're going to see exactly what this fossil looks like when we've unearthed the entire thing. But that's going to require a quick trip back to base. I want to get some materials that we can use to make the mineshaft kind of integrated with everything. I need to bring some oak wood over in large quantities. And I think we're going to do all of this in the form of a time lapse.
Hey folks, welcome back. I hope you guys enjoyed the time lapse. I like this place. I do want to do a lot more to it though. I feel like we can make this place look really great if we have a little bit more time. And right now, unfortunately, I don't have a huge amount of time to finish up this episode and get it out to you guys on time. But down there, we've kept the lava. The lava looks so ominous at the bottom of the ravine. Down there, we have ourselves a fossil. And I actually want to go down and add a few slabs to this platform here because the coal blocks are currently floating above the platform platform of slabs and I think I might introduce more wood types to this. One detail I'm really happy with actually is the use of grindstones as pulleys. I just couldn't decide which direction made the most sense for them and whether we should swap out the oak wood here for something like dark oak and maybe have I don't know like fence gates here instead of fence posts. I feel like that might potentially give it a little bit more of the connectivity with the grindstone block model here but I don't know how that would look if they were just like fence gates all the way down. It might seem a little bit weird. Maybe we can open up the fence gates though. I don't know. We will try that. I'll try that a little bit off camera, maybe in a creative world or something. Maybe you guys can let me know in the comments what you think as well. But down here, we do need to do a little bit more terraforming of the wall. I was just worried about water flowing in from outside and flooding the lava down there. And I really want to keep the lava. I actually quite like it. It, it feels sort of, it goes with the prehistoric theme of all of the bones. So what I'm going to do, I think, and we're going to do this maybe in tomorrow's episode, is connect up the land masses here using like a, a sand land bridge kind of situation over here. And then we can do a lot more with the, the overall look of this place. I imagined it being like a long trench that the archaeologists had dug out. And unfortunately, we've had to kind of box it off here so that it could not have water flowing into it the entire time. So we're going to do a lot of terraforming there. I've got a bunch of sand, obviously, from digging out this place. So hopefully we'll be able to to make that look good and spend a lot more time on it when I've got the time. Now down here, I can finally show you exactly what these fossils look like up close. Although you've seen a fair amount of that in the time lapse already, I'll give you guys a quick tour of the fossil as it exists down here because it's a pretty neat little construction. And for folks playing in peaceful mode, this is actually one of the few ways to get a large quantity of bone meal, at least before the introduction of composters. Because before composters, you couldn't really do anything about bone meal, because bone meal required skeletons, and skeletons aren't really present in peaceful mode. So the only real sources of bone meal were stuff like fossils like this, and the bones that you would find in dungeon chests or desert temples. So you couldn't exactly grow stuff manually the way that we are used to bone mealing stuff when we play on normal or hard difficulty and so forth. But right here, this is the fossil in its entirety. I have checked inside the wall and obviously I've dug out an area over there as well and there doesn't seem to be any further bone blocks nestled into the rock here. This is just a giant rib cage made out of bone blocks and of course while I could harvest all of this and break it down for the bone blocks I think it is much much cooler having one of these things in our world. Now you might be wondering why I haven't removed these coal blocks. The coal blocks themselves are actually generated as part of the fossil. Coal itself is kind of a fossilized thing. I mean, if, if you think about the natural process that creates coal, it's uh, lots of vegetable matter and peat and stuff compressed over thousands, if not millions of years. And so the coal being part of this almost feels like a natural thing to me. And I like the fact that the, uh, the bone blocks kind of imply there were some sort of giant creatures that roamed the Minecraft landscape long ago and have since been buried in desert and swamps. So I think that's a perfect thing to have in this world to kind of create a little bit of atmosphere and a little bit of lore. And down here I actually have a tunnel that will lead us back out to the abandoned mine shaft so this whole thing gets connected up. I need to make it slightly more accessible to the surface and I wanted to include scaffolding a little bit more in this because I think scaffolding would be a really great thing to have around here but I wasn't quite sure how to use it. If maybe we should have some scaffolding just kind of going up into the skeleton itself so that people could chip away at it and bring back samples to the dig site up there and that kind of thing. But I like the elevator design. It's a fairly simple kind of pulley elevator sort of thing. We need to maybe make a crane or something around here with like counterweights and stuff on it as well. I think that would look really, really cool. But for now, I am running out of time for this episode. So I think we're going to call it a day here. And I'm so, so happy that we have showcased this 
as a fossil. And I want to give a quick shout out to Alison, who was a supporter of mine on Patreon and has been suggesting for a little while that I do an episode about fossils and was even the person who sent me the coordinates of a fossil in the same world using the same seed, but for whatever reason that fossil didn't generate in my world. So thank you very much, Alison, and I hope everybody else enjoyed the episode as well. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixorifs. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care, bye for now.